Hello, my name is Mike. In this short little video, we're going to show you how to use the Spring Creator to import some Google models directly from the web and add interactivity to those models. So first thing we'll do is we'll go over here to Internet Explorer, where I've already done a search and I found some different terrain models that are in Google Warehouse. And I'm going to pick this one here because it's got some water to it. We're going to use that later in the demo. And all I need to do is simply take the model that I want to import and just drag it directly over to a Spring Creator and drop it in. We'll be prompted with a dialog just accept the defaults and say OK. And here we see our model has been imported. Remember everything in Spring Creator is real time so we can do whatever we want to the model and we see the effect uh, immediately. So the first thing I want to do is I want to improve the, the look of the terrain a little bit more. I want to give it a little bit more texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over uh, to the plant section in the asset browser because I know there's a nice little ground terrain material or image that I'd like to use. Simply grab it out of the asset browser and drop it on a terrain. And instantly we can see a difference in the, the terrain. Uh, it's got a much more rocky look to it. We'll zoom in on it here so that you can see it a little bit better. And the next couple things I'd like to do to this, uh, this Google model is I want to improve uh, the sky and the water. So let's start with the sky. So I'm going to click up here to Images Environmental. And let's pick a nice cloud environment. So we'll just take and drag that over onto the sky. And now you can see we've got some clouds in the background. Again, everything's real time. So the next thing I think we'll do is let's go ahead and improve the water a little bit. So we'll go over here and let's select the water. And let's go ahead and just remove the Google water. And let's add an experience creator water. So we'll go down to materials, liquids, And let's start with just an ocean water. So I'm just going to bring this in, drag it right into my scene, drop it. And it's asking me if I want to add an automatic reflection and refraction to that. And I'm just going to go ahead and accept the defaults and say yes. Now, obviously our water is a little small there. So let's go ahead and increase the size a little bit. Look over here. Go a thousand by a thousand. And now we have some nice water. Go ahead and reposition a little bit better. There we go. Now you can see that the water that we've added here is starting to, to make the scene look much more realistic. We can see some reflections going on here from the mountains. We can see that the clouds are reflecting in the water. You can see some more reflections here. And more importantly, when I hit the play button, you can see that we've actually got the, the waves are actually animating and you can see the, the uh, the ripples and again the reflections all happening in that as well so our scene is looking much more realistic the last thing I think we'll do to this scene is uh, I think we need a boat in the scene so let's let's hop back over to Internet Explorer and I've already done some ser a search here for some some boats in uh, Google Warehouse again yeah, this, this nice little red boat here looks pretty good, so let's click on that. And again, to bring in the model, we simply just take the model, drag it over, and drop it in our scene. And we're going to accept the defaults. Now, here's our model, um, and obviously this boat is quite large. Uh, it doesn't really fit the scene very well. So what we need to do is we need to make a little adjustment to the boat. So what we'll do is we'll just simply select it, and let's just scale it down. So it's a more reasonable size for our scene here. And then we'll simply move it into the place we want it to live on the water. We'll bring it down. Bring it down to the water level. And you can see that there again you're starting to see the, the reflections in the water. 
all again happening real time. And we'll plant that there. I think it's probably a little bit smaller. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Bring it down to water level. Zoom up on that a little bit more. And we hit play. We've got a nice boat in our scene. So now that we have our boat in the scene, let's actually add a little bit more interactivity to this. Uh, obviously we can spin the scene around, but I want to be able to drive that boat. So let's, let me show you how we would do that. So I'll stop the scene. Got our boat already inserted and we got it where we want it to start from. We'll do go over here to the vehicles directory and we're going to use what we call a smart object. And a smart object allows us to just simply drag uh, from the asset browser onto the object we want to perform, uh, in this case, a, a boat controller. Drop it on our boat. And now this time when I press play, and I use the arrow keys on the keyboard, I can actually drive my boat around the scene. Now let's add a little bit more realism to that. That boat needs a wake. So let's go over to another smart object in the particle systems directory. And let's drag a, a wake onto that boat. Drop it on there. And we'll hit play. We'll move the boat. Oh, look at that. Our wake isn't connected to the boat. So let me show you how easily that is. That can be done. So we'll hit the stop button. Go up here to our objects. Simply grab our wake and make it part of the boat group. Make sure our wake is positioned nicely on the back of our boat. And now this time, when we press the play button, our boat leaves a little bit of a wake. And that concludes this short little video. I hope you've uh, learned a couple in interesting things that you can do with Asperient Creator. And you can learn more about us at www.asperient.com. Thank you very much.